final game for India before the final in this Asia Cup. And here we are on Creek Buzz Live, right at the very top. We, of course, have received the news that India are going in with wholesale changes for this particular game. The big fast bowlers will not be there. The impact bowlers will not be there. But in our studios of Creek Buzz Live, we have our two fast bowlers very much intact. We haven't rested them. We haven't given them a break. So here they are, Simon Dula and Zaheer Khan. Gentlemen, you've got the ball in hand. We're not giving you a rest. We don't have five replacements. <laughs> There's not five others ready to come in for us like there are for India. It was, um, yeah, I mean, good changes at the toss, I guess. But, um, you know, nice opportunities for these young guys to, to get a go and, and for Deepak Chahar to get an opportunity as well, I think. Uh, Zach, is, is it a nice thing? Good opportunity, isn't it? A, you know, enough, not a no-win game, but I mean, it doesn't matter, and they can just go out and be what, be what well, they like. How many times actually you see that you are, uh, you are sitting in this position as a team? And that's a great sign, you know, mm. you, are, you are actually in a position where you can afford to do these kind of changes. That means the team has been consistently doing well, and that's mm. something which, which everyone is happy with. I think uh, this also gives them that opportunity of, of uh, what happens when there is no good start. Yeah. Because see, Rohit and Shikhar have not been really giving anyone any opportunity of, of uh, or, the, or that pressure, you know, when, when a wicket or two falls mm. from the top and then, you know, middle order gets exposed. But uh, this is a perfect opportunity to, uh, to test that out as well, like, you know, trying people in different positions. So, uh, so, so I think for the finals, this has come as a, as a very thoughtful kind of a mm. decision. Well, let's just have a look and confirm those changes. The two openers have been replaced by KL Rahul and Manish Pandey and the three bowlers, Bhuvi, Jaspreet Bumra and Yuzvinder Chehel have been replaced by the three quick bowlers, Deepak Chehel, Khalil Ahmed and Siddharth Kaul. So these are the five changes India are going through and the sixth change in a sense is the fact that MS Dhoni, obviously, with Rohit Sharma not there, will be the captain. Shikhar Dhawan, the vice-captain, he's not playing as well, but a good <laughs> landmark uh, duly for him. Stuck at 199. And he's normally one who would dismiss it and say, what landmark? Mm. But he was very candid there saying, yeah, I was in 199. It's good to make it 200. Yeah, I mean, he's been a magnificent captain, hasn't he? And he uh, gets another opportunity today. It, it may be his last opportunity. Who knows? Unless maybe a Coley gets injured at the World Cup. But Shikadawan was vice-captain, so I'm sure that that might be the same when it gets to World Cup time. Um, great milestone for him. And as he says all the time, I think, MS, he, he doesn't look too much at stats. He just worries about his own performance and, and winning games for India. So it's a nice milestone for him. I think he'll um, celebrate it at the end of the day. But, um, yeah, very, very pleasant for him, I'm sure. But he couldn't, of course, win a toss. India have been appalling no. at tosses in the last six months. I mean, they've been winning games. But the point, the toss was not required. What was the need of the toss? Mm. When you, you you know that you're going to bowl first and and uh, the winning the captain has, yeah, first. opposition wants to bat first. So that... The toss was really not necessary. But You've seen it with on, Pakistan as well. Let me put you on the spot here. Hmm. Assuming you were part of this bowling unit doing so very well and you've led the Indian attack for many, many years, going into a match like this, if the captain gave you the option, Zach, like one game with two days to go for the final, would you like a rest or would you rather keep playing if you were given the option? Well, I was always used to tilt on the other side where I would want to play because, hmm. you know, that's something which I always... Uh, felt that match practice and staying in that zone, staying under that pressure is always a good thing. Like, you know, you are always in touch uh, with with dealing of uh, that pressure. But uh, having said that, it's it's also an individual call. Like, you know, that that's something which I preferred. And uh, I always felt that I, I could manage myself in nets. Like, you know, at times mm, there, yeah. there used to be a time where I, I hardly used to bowl in the nets because the rhythm is there. You know, you are in that zone. When you hit that uh, first first over and take that run up, you know that you're not going to bowl no balls, you're going to tick all the boxes, then practice is just a touch up mm. of and, and topping up of things. If that is not required, then you manage yourself in practices. But like I said, you know, it also depends on an individual what kind of, uh, what kind of approach one has. Like, you know, there are different bowlers have approached the game differently. There are bowlers who I've seen who used to love bowling in nets before mm. the matches and used to make sure, okay, have I bowled 10 Yorkers if I've not bowled? 10 Yorkers, then I'm not going to feel uh, comfortable when I'm uh, when I'm taking uh, my run up in the match situation. So, so it depends on the individual. You style look at these well. two guys. I think um, when you look at Bumrah, he had a big long tour of India, and he's had a great start to this tournament. Two or three days off might do him the world of good leading into that final. Uh, Bumi, uh, uh, Bumi, had, had a couple of injuries. Back issue. Yeah. yeah, had a couple of injuries. So played three games now. A little bit rusty in the first game. Brilliant in the next two games. 
another couple of days off just to make sure that he rehabs well. I mean, as Zach said, you're very rarely lucky enough to be in these situations. I think as a as a bowling unit, or even as a team, where it's not, it doesn't matter. Everybody still wants India to win. I'm sure you know every every supporter wants India to win, and they'll be going out there to win. It's not that their team is that much less. It just doesn't have a couple of their top tier players. But opportunities are presented today, and I look at this side and I think, you know, what a great opportunity for Manish Pandey, maybe to put some pressure on Raidu or on Dinesh Kartik. If he, if he gets a chance and gets a big 100 and DK doesn't get a bat, what do they do for the final? Do they say, hang on a minute, man in form, looked good in England, great innings in, the, in this game here, maybe we can drop DK, maybe we can play Manish Pandey at five because he's coming off big runs. So a couple of big opportunities for him, for KL as well. Good dilemma, but the batting will come later. Let's stick to the bowling mm -hmm. for the moment. Deepak Chair, of course, on debut. But talk about Khalil before that. We've already seen him once in the tournament. What's your uh, take on him? Well, he's, he's been fantastic so far, I think. You know, he, he must be thinking that, oh, I was unlucky to miss out on a few games, which is, uh, again, like, before the Asia Cup, I actually didn't think that he will be getting an opportunity. You know, it's, it's, it's great that, you know, he's, he was able to showcase his talent. He's got that confidence. And uh, like we always are talking about now, World Cup and an option, if, what if some injury happens? You know, we've seen it with Hardik Pandya as well. And with injuries, you, uh, you are never sure. So with uh, with Bhuvi also uh, having just come back from injury, that one uh, one question was always dangling over team management's head. That like you know, what if some injury happens? What are what are our options? You know, so they are making sure that those options are also at the same time getting ready, be it batting or or bowling. Now you know you need to have those options. People need to be able to deal in a in a, in a pressure situation because when you talk about tournament like well World under pressure. Already, he's tried and tested. Absolutely, I think, you know, and, and uh, more exposure at this level is just going to help you deal with that pressure. And mind you, when you play a tournament like World Cup, it's not only cricket you're playing, it's also the expectation, it's also yeah. the pressure. And uh, you can't just put uh, some youngster there right away and hoping that, then you're hoping, you know, it, it might work your way, it might not work your way, but the chances of it not working out or a person not able to deal with the pressure is on the higher side. So, you know, you're, you're negating those kind of uh, questions as well. Giving themselves well, options, aren't they? With with Khalil, I think he, if if you look at that situation with Bouvi and, and with Boomer, if Bouvi got injured, I think Deepak Chahar would be the man, wouldn't he? He's, he's the most yeah. like for like bowler. Right. Swings it away, swings it in. You know, got that got that good ball at the death as well. Khalil would probably be the man to take Boomer's place, I think, just to give them something different because that's what Boomer offers. Also, that death bowling he bowls the York as well, just offers a little bit different with the left arm. So they're giving themselves some nice options, I think like for like almost options no one's ever going to be like just Brick Boomer um, but, <laughs> but it, it's something different well, in, a left arm, in a left arm option so I, I think that's that's nice from an Indian point of view. But Dooley since you did bring up Manish Pandey we've pulled out a few numbers uh, because of course they will be uh, chasing later on let's just have a look at this from Manish Pandey's point of view in the A series mm. and uh, very very healthy strike rate got a hundred couple of fifties and you know, that's that's the kind of numbers that he's brought into this tournament. He's always... I'd, I'd like uh, our guys to tell us how many one-day internationals he's actually played for India. Just he, They can tell you in your ear, I'm sure. But I always found with Manish Pandey, he, he oozes talent. Has he been given an extended run? Has he been given the opportunities that a DK has been given? That, that one or two others have been given at that four or five spot? Because if he has... I wonder whether he, or if he had, I wonder whether he'd be a far better player now. 22 is what he's played. 22. And, and how many in a row would be, the, would be the key for me? Has he played 8 or 10 in a row? Or has he been in and out and in and out? And that would be my issue with Manish I, Pandey. I think he has it's all been erratic. In and out, yeah. Yeah, yeah. see, I, I think he's a player of immense talent. Yeah. And, and when I watch him bat, he, he looks so stylish and looks so good. And given an extended run of, you know, Manish, you're going to play the next 10 games. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about being dropped. You are in for the next 10 games. I think India would, would, would reap the benefits of that. And what he's shown as a batsman, I mean, obviously he's, he's blossomed in, in the IPL, in the T20 format. That's where he could show his wares. But even in that format, he's shown he's good for a long innings, which is why in 50 over cricket, he's, he's one of those guys who could go on and get 100. Absolutely. I think, you know, he's, he's someone who has scored 100 in Australia. You know, that shows that, you know, he's capable of, of dealing with... Uh, with uh, with fast bowling as well, which is which is very important. Like you know, you you don't have uh, quality spin if you look at most of the teams in the world. Like you mm -hmm. know, you you don't have the same quality as uh, Kuldeep or uh, 
or Chahal for that matter. So it's important that you you get used to uh, scoring runs in those middle lows particularly when uh, when usually the strategy is to hit the deck hard, you know, get it uh, right up at your chest level and then it's very difficult to uh, uh, score runs at a, at, at a good pace. So he's he's figured out a way of delivering in, in, in those kind of scenarios. So, and that's why he's there right now. I think, you know, he's, he's there in the team because, uh, because Shreyas was also there who's not been like, you know, part of the team, but, uh, but hasn't really scored in the, in the A series. And, and that's something, you know, which, which you have to consistently uh, keep performing to, to, to stay in the team. And, and that's something, you know, which right now is a good thing around uh, the Indian team. You know, you, you can never relax right now as, as a batsman or a bowler as well, like, you know, to, to, to stay in the team. So there's this nice healthy competition going on. It's, and uh, that also makes it very hard for someone to get a, a consistent mm. long run as yeah. well. So, you know, and even team management has got those good headaches to deal with. <laughs> even Zach, players who are not out there in the middle in the desert are scoring big runs in the Vijay Hazare Trophy, uh, like Shreya Sire, big runs for Mumbai. I was, just, they about, pile up I was, just, about, I was just about to say, I mean, you've got Prithvi Shaw, you've got Shubman Gill, Shreya Sire, yeah. um, who was the, um, Ambati Raidu, he scored a big 140 the other day, 130 the other day for Mumbai. So you've got guys waiting in the wings who are just ready to pounce, um, was, which is... Rahane. Rahane, Rahane. sorry, Rahane. Uh, not Raidu, Rahane. Rahane. That would Rahane. have been a quick flight for Raidu. Yeah, well, I was going to say Raidu backwards <laughs> and forwards just to get a few runs. Uh, but, you know, there's plenty of guys around that are scoring runs outside of this team. So unless one of these guys gets an extended opportunity and, and allowed to, you know, to make his place in that side... They can bring other guys in and out. But and, also, um, also you know. because of this point, you know, it's so important that Bumra stays fit. Mm. It's so important that Bhuvi stays fit. Because you have enough options around batting that you can kind of manage with. But when it comes to bowling, you know, these kind of answers are not there available. You know, you're hoping mm. that Khalil will uh, uh, get molded in, in, into that kind of responsibility. Or you're, you're hoping that Siddharth Kohl also starts showing those kind of signs. Or Deepak Chahar... Mm. Uh, swings the ball consistently and contributes with the with the bat as well, but they're still not quite there. Yeah, lo lots of cricket still to come for India before leading in, even into the IPL, let alone the World Cup of 20 ODIs, six Test mm. matches, plenty of T20 internationals. So busy period coming up between now and that big and World similar Cup. Similar conditions as well. Uh, they'll strike reasonably similar conditions in Australia and New Zealand as they will get in England. I think uh, you know our surfaces are pretty flat, grounds are quite small, and England is very similar to that nowadays. Australian surface is quite flat. Some of the grounds, a couple of them are a bit bigger, but, but generally really good flat um, surfaces. So they'll strike very similar conditions to England, I think. Yeah, Manish Pandey, of course, we were chatting about him. Uh, he's got that uh, 100 in Australia, chasing uh, over 300 runs. Well, Afghanistan have been a team who have been consistently putting up very decent totals. And today they're batting first. Let's first have a look at their playing 11. And then we'll uh, try and try and assess what their performance has been like, even though they have no chance of making the final right now. It's really been about a few moments that they haven't uh, played well. Javed Ahmadi comes back into the side. And Najibullah Zadran, who always contributes down the order, big hitting batsman. And uh, so, in a sense, they've strengthened both their departments of the game. But uh, there's plenty for them to take out of this last game. Because for a nation like them, yes, they haven't made the final. There's so much more for them to look forward to. Yeah, there is. They'd love to test India. They've tested everyone else. They've been, you know, they've been at the the pick of the sides in this tournament outside of India, I think, from that first game. So they'd love to be able to test India, to put again 240, 250 on the board, and just bring their spinners into the game and maybe test some of these guys in this Indian batting lineup. Whether they can do it, well, that remains to be seen. But I just think they would love to be able to put that score on the board and just say, you know, we've tested Pakistan, we've tested Bangladesh, and Sri Lanka. India are the big boys. India are our big, you know, they, they towed us up in that test match and that one opportunity that we had in Bangalore. We'd just love to be able to give them a little bit to think about, just a little nibble at their heels and see what they're like. It's a, it's a cruel game, isn't it? Because if you assess, as Dooley said, if you assess the teams in this tournament, they're definitely number two after India. And yet, they have no chance of making the final. Mm -hmm. It's Bangladesh and Pakistan who are going to be fighting for that final spot in a sense. But that's, that's what they've got to take out. Well, the most exciting to... Uh, uh, in this tournament to watch the team has, has been Afghanistan. Mm. You know, it's, they've been playing such good cricket and it's just that, you know, they, every time they've been going on the field, looks like a celebration. Like, you know, yeah. they're they are so happy to be out there. Doesn't matter how tough the conditions are. Not once you got that feeling when you're looking at this team that they are complaining about anything. Mm. You know, they're complaining about and nothing. And those numbers. I think uh, 
Yes, I mean, the, the close games happened, you know, and, and, and they managed to win against uh, Sri Lanka and uh, Bangladesh as well. Has been a certainly emerging team mm. of the tournament. You know, it's, I think just, they just need probably one good quick bowler who is able to bowl consistently at 140 or yeah. a team which can deal in, uh, in, in, a, in a different conditions to the spinning friendly conditions. You know, on good tracks, if they start competing, I think this team will be the team which everyone will mm. be talking about in the before they play them. That you know, you have to be watchful because the plan they've created a formula. Like you know, they've they've figured that formula out. Score two fifty runs in these kind of conditions, yep. and then put pressure on with with thirty overs of real quality spin bowling. So if they can add it with with probably two good batsmen who are giving them just that fifteen twenty runs above yeah. par. And adding that fast bowler one or two who can just kind of, you know, gives them option of playing in those good uh, bouncy tracks to have that option of, you know, playing uh, probably three spinners and two seamers who can create pressure. Mm. I think this team just will be... A couple of little parts aren't they missing? I mean, uh, this is going to sound harsh, but a fit wicketkeeper. <laughs> we right. talked about this you the know, other day. Seriously, I mean, he can't be playing international yeah. cricket. I'm sorry. It's, this is going to sound really bad, but... He's so lethargical behind the stumps and misses so many deliveries and yeah. so many balls for what he does for you with the bat, and he's got 150 in the tournament. I just think that it doesn't set a good standard. If they want to proceed or progress in international cricket, I don't think that sets a great standard for their team. Uh, I agree with Zach. A, a quality quick bowler would be great for them. Someone who can bowl at the death. That's where they lost yeah. that Pakistan game. They just didn't quite have the death bowling abilities. They used Rashid a lot because they were able to do that you know, with the fact that they've got the good spin in um, Mujib and in Nabi as well. So they can use um, Rashid late in the piece, and he's very difficult to get away. So, I, I, yeah, one quick bowler, fit, healthy wicketkeeper. And I, I know, the, the other <laughs> night, <laughs> in our late <laughs> night show with Harsha and Joy, we were chatting exactly about that, and, uh, you know, the only conclusion is that uh, he's the reason why Afghanistan have the stomach for a good fight. <laughs> <laughs> Or but just, I, or just get him sorted out. I mean, he can clearly play. He's clearly got some ability to bat. I mean, just sitting down and talk to him, listen, you're not in shape for international cricket. We need to drop 20 kilos here. How are we going to do this? Before the World Cup, let's get you a dietitian. Let's get you a fitness trainer. Let's get you sorted because you've got ability to play. Kilos. I think, he's, he's oh, I think it's 20 kilos. I think he's yeah. past that. You reckon? Case. Oh, I don't know. Everyone <laughs> can lose it. You know, you, you've got the ability to lose it if you want to. Maybe you should get tips from me. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but in terms of fast bowlers, you know, they have had a few impact fast bowlers over the years. Hamid Hassan, Shapur Zadran, big man on bouncy mm -hmm. pitches in the World Cup. He was very effective. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't quite know where, where they are at the moment. But certainly they're sorted in the spin department. Yep. Solidity mm -hmm. in the batting. Yes, as you said, the keeper and a couple of fast bowlers. Mm -hmm. And uh, the real thing about them is the consistency of their scores. We've had Hong Kong who have had a good game against India, but otherwise they've had a, you know, shown that they're still struggling. Yeah. Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, both have had disappointing scores. But Afghanistan, 250 every single time. Look, these kind of conditions, I think they've figured how to kind of get in a winning situation. Mm. You know, they, and, and they are, the, the heartening fact was uh, in this tournament, they've been consistently achieving that. It, it, it doesn't matter whether they lose wickets early or they don't lose wickets. They kind of know how to approach these 50 mm. overs They've not looked like they're rushed in the middle overs. You know, they've been taking time, leaving it uh, till late. And yes, uh, Rashid Khan also pl played that uh, superb innings yeah. with uh, with Naib in that one match. You know, which really uh, was an extraordinary inning to get them to that 250. So, so things do happen. Things do go your way when you start believing in it. And I think you know that's that that's something which has uh, this tournament has shown for them. What, what they need to do is, 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 is still they need that probably, you know, one or two batsmen who can, who can get them that above par kind of score. You know, you, when you look at uh, the, the likes of uh, Ramat Shah also, you know, you get that feeling that, you know, he's, he's sorted, he's figured out his, his way that, okay, you know, this is how I'm going to approach, has been consistent yep. performer at, at first class level and the, and the list A matches which he's been playing. So that's, that's a good sign. So he needs support around it. And uh, once once they get that, they'll be uh, they'll be troubling the teams uh, even more uh, in a in a threatening manner. Yeah, it's, it's very key to see a nation like Afghanistan and, and where they play a lot of their cricket. And of course, the two Ds are where they oscillate between Dehradun in India, one of their bases, but also where this Asia Cup is being played in Dubai. They've played a lot of their cricket there, and uh, Dubai, of course, is uh, headquarters for the ICC, and that's where their academy is. And we thought it's very appropriate that we should send out our team and visit. 
this ICC Academy. We are here with the general manager of the ICC Academy, Will Kitchen. We could have sat inside as well, but you chose to sit in the sun. Why, Will? Why? This is the best part of our facility. The grass facilities are, um, I think, are, are our, our key feature. So it's nice to be outside uh, and not sat in the office for once. So that's what I want, I want you guys to come and have a feel for what it's actually like out here. You, you know, it is actually very beautiful, but I do know that this is not the only facility with grass. You have a few more of these. How many? So we've got um, two ovals here at the academy, obviously within the site, um, plus the extensive nets. There's, a, there's quite a number of grass facilities in the UAE, but um, in terms of the specification and what we have to offer here, our, our two ovals, our, our net facilities, and obviously our stadium are, are pretty unique, and, and that's what we have. These pitches, you can tailor make them and a lot of international teams come here, practice here and then move over to destinations. Tell us about that a little bit. Correct. So um, I guess there's two there's two sides to it. There's there's obviously the cricket that we host here for the purposes of preparing people to, to go on and play here. So for example, uh, the Australian team arrived today, they're going to be playing a bilateral series against Pakistan here. So the, the clay that they're going to practice on is identical to the, the clay that's in the uh, in the stadium and actually very similar to the stuff that's at Abu Dhabi. So, um, and of course we've got a good example at the moment as well of the West Indies. So they've come in for a 10-day for a camp, they're off to India uh, for a big series over there. So they're going to come in for a slightly different purpose which is again accessing the Asian surfaces. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be playing around with those a little bit to replicate some of the stuff that they're going to be getting in, in India. So, uh, Will, can you just take us through the different facilities that you have here? Yep. So we've got, um, in terms of facilities, we've we've got two two um, playing ovals. One of which is accredited for One Day International T20 International Cricket at Associate level. Both of them are floodlit. Um, both of the playing ovals feature turf, Pakistani turf, Asian turf, yep. and Australian playing surfaces. So Wacker and Gabba playing surfaces. So we've got different surfaces on the squares. Um, we've got a huge grass net area which extends to um, 90 metres um, by, by 45 metres. We've got a 65 metre indoor centre which has got multiple um, lanes across it, so spin lanes, seam lanes um, and, and genuinely quick lanes. Um, and obviously within the, within the broader campus next door I've got an Olympic swimming pool, gym, uh, you can see at the far end of our oval here we've got a school. Yeah. So we've got um, schools on site, a uh, golf course, it's a pretty extensive facility. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. We should end with images, one of a nation winning a World Cup and of course of one of the emerging nations, Ireland in this, uh, in this case. Great to have facilities like that. And the one thing I got from there was to be able to access pitches of different kinds. That is the key, I think. I think so. I think, you know, in, uh, especially for batsmen, uh, for, for bowlers, you can still manage because the distance in the wicket remains the same. You still got to hit that length, which is around six to eight meters in, in a one day. And in test matches, it just goes a little ahead. But, uh, but yeah, for, for batsmen, it's, it's important that, uh, that they get adjusted to different bounces and, and just kind of different surfaces. Yeah, Australia and the West Indies are both in the desert while the Asia Cup is on. So, a lot of the cricketing world actually present in Dubai there for differing reasons. For now, we are going to come to our time where we start testing those brain cells of yours. <laughs> yes, Joy may not be in the studio, but he's always left us with one of his googlies. Here's our Joy Factor. Now, this is what it is for today. What connects Mohinder Amanath, Virinder Sehwag before 2003 and Shubman Gill especially during the Under-19 Cricket World Cup. It could be a variety of things. If you know how Joy thinks, well, you've got to try and figure it out and tell us, hashtag CrickBuzzLive, what you think the answer is. And of course, if we expect a lot of people to give the answer, maybe give us something more with your hashtag in there. Give us another reason. Tell us exactly why you have a strange handle, because we've had some people with great handles coming in there. So I'm not going to get any ideas out of you gentlemen, because... We're going to leave it to the folks mm -hmm. out there, but okay. just a quick thought now. Afghanistan have been consistent. What do you reckon they need to put up? Uh, given the fact that India have a new bowling attack, so they'll, they'll fancy themselves to get 275, you reckon? Uh, they need more than 250. Uh, I can't see them getting... I, I think this young bowling attack or this 
fresh bowling attack, will have something to say about it today. Just to sum up very briefly, we don't have much time left, but mentally what would be going through the likes of Khalil and Deepak Chahar, knowing, and we had lots of numbers to talk about, we don't have time to talk about them, that Bumrah and Bhuvi have been doing so well at the top and at the depth. Will they feel any pressure uh, saying, we need to deliver like the seniors did? Not pressure, I think it's opportunity for them. You know, it's, it's, it's opportunity to showcase their talent and I think from Afghanistan's uh, point of view, so far in the tournament, no one has scored 250 against India. So if they're able to achieve that against India as well, doesn't matter what kind of team is playing or what kind of attack they're facing, I think it will be a big thing. It will be a big statement from them that you know they are ready for any kind of challenge. Yeah. Only Hong Kong managed to really challenge that, especially in that first power play, consistently got a partnership going. Well, we just about have time on the show to get some uh, predictions. We don't have our prediction guru. It's been Hasha this time around. <laughs> so since he's missing, let's see what we can get. What are Afghanistan going to get at the end of 50 overs? Uh, I unfortunately think it'll come crashing down for them today. 207. 207, harsh man, Simon Dool, <laughs> that are you going to be going I with the Indian think, youngsters? Uh, 230, I think, 230 they should be able to manage. 230, well I haven't been in too badly myself and I've been told that I shouldn't try and be sitting on a fence and take a figure between the two of them, so I'm going to be generous to them again and go with uh, 247, 247 for Afghanistan. Just Small say, margins. Small margins today. Then small margins, but fair enough, that's all you need. <laughs> it's been small margins for Afghanistan. Just a few moments against Bangladesh, a few moments in the rest of the tournament, they could have been even in the final. They're not going to be. Plenty of pride to play for. Plenty to play for, for MSD, captaining in his 200th ODI. We'll be back very soon. We, of course, will have uh, the mid-show, and we'll have Uber Presents Crick Buzz Combox, even before that, in the 15th over.